Hi and welcome everybody to the fourth episode. Uh, Mark, why are we here? Hi Felix, yeah. we're at the Museum of Natural History yeah. in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And we're here for a few reasons. First of all, the museum has a fantastic Arctic exhibit yeah. and we're gonna go see a little bit of it. And it's very illuminating. Okay. Second, the Museum of Natural History was the mm -hmm. building where the Arctic Council met in 2012 when Sweden uh -huh. was the chair of the Arctic Council and Sweden had a very successful okay. chairmanship of the Arctic Council. Yeah. And third, Professor Ross Virginia yeah. from Dartmouth College is here and we're gonna meet him in person. He's Ross, in here, he's a real here. professor. I'm a bit nervous now. Well, don't be too nervous, he's but, a great guy. Yeah. But Mark, I must say something now. It's snowing now. Is the climate changing again? Are we, why are we talking about all these problems? I mean, maybe it's cold again. Felix, it? Yeah. it is snowing. Yeah. And that's a great point. The fact of the matter is that the first 14 years mm -hmm. of the 21st century are the warmest on record in the modern era. Let's I mean, go learn something about the Arctic and climate change. Okay, good. Let's uh, take a step in here. Fantastic. You know, I was here first time when I was, uh, or last time when I was about uh, eight years, I think, old. So and I've been here 40 years ago. 40 years yeah, ago? Yeah, I've okay. never been here since then. Fantastic. What yeah. do you remember? Oh, well, uh, a lot of whales and stuff. Great exhibition here. A lot of seals also. You know, we didn't see any seals in the Arctic. But I hope in the future, a museum isn't the only place that we can see examples of such animals. Mm, I agree. We've had a remarkable journey, yeah, Felix. Yeah, I agree. Fantastic. Through, through not just Sweden's Arctic area, mm. but the challenges that we were able to bear witness to, whether mm. it's Rabots Glacier, which mm. is an example of something mm. melting so significantly, mm. or meeting with Nila Inga. Yeah, he was the fantastic. Sami people who yeah. gave that testimonial mm -hmm. of the death mm -hmm. of his society mm -hmm. because of climate change or going to Abisko mm -hmm. and seeing how science experiments are showing how gases mm -hmm. are being released by the ground because of melting mm -hmm. and in so doing affect atmosphere mm -hmm. from so far away. Yeah, it's been a very strong impressions and, and uh, I mean, I, were, I know you were engaged before in this a lot, but you really got me hooked on this too. So I, I'm, I, I'm going to tell my, my kids and my friends and everybody that I can affect uh, in this matter and in, make people get to know about this problem and yeah. so on. Here we have Professor Ross Virginia of Dartmouth mm -hmm. College the Arctic Studies Institute there, who's just been named one of the lead scholars of the new Arctic Fulbright program. The Fulbright program is trying to develop information, scholarship, information. So we begin to realize that the Arctic is part of our lives and, and we affect the Arctic. And we have one shared future together. And, and we need this scholarship, we need this information. But we also need to find ways that this information leads to action, that we just don't observe, we take action to improve conditions. Great. Here's the Arctic. Yeah, no, it's a model of Arctic. It is a model yeah, of the it? Arctic. Yeah, yeah, it's it not is. the Arctic, the real one, no. It's not the real Arctic. I'm kidding Arctic, with you, sorry, but sorry. It's much yeah. bigger than this. It's right. bigger, yeah. But, but it, it is huge. It, it is huge, but it's changing, isn't it, Professor Virginia? Yes, what you're seeing is the, the Arctic is largely the Arctic Ocean surrounded by the eight nations, right, Arctic nations. The big change is, is as the atmosphere warms, this bright white is going to be reduced in size. This is the Arctic sea ice, which we predict in 10 to 20 years will disappear largely in summer, opening up shipping routes, opening up access to oil and gas, also changing the environment immeasurably too in terms of biodiversity, the ability of uh, coastal communities to subsistence fish and hunt, all of that's dependent on ice. And the ice is changing rapidly. Ross. Why is the Arctic important? Well, the Arctic is important because it's connected to the rest of the planet. And what happens in the Arctic doesn't just stay in the Arctic. As the climate warms, the ice, the glaciers, the sea ice melts, sea level rises. Um, 11 out of the 15 great cities in the world are connected to the coastline, to estuaries. As that ice melts and that water goes into the ocean, sea level rises. Mm. Maybe a meter, maybe a meter by the end of this century. A meter doesn't sound like much, but it's enough to affect all our coastal cities. Yeah. And as we have more and more storms, which are predicted with climate change, wave action will move way inland, up the rivers, up the estuaries. So we're gonna to have to re-engineer our cities. And some cities and countries that don't have the wealth to do that are gonna suffer direct damage. So the Arctic 
really does matter to every person on the planet. And the big challenge now is to raise awareness of the Arctic so everyone is concerned about its future. But most importantly, we need to figure out how to slow down the rate of change so we can come up with rational ways of thinking about the future Arctic, because it's going to be different than today's Arctic. So, Professor Virginia, the white is going to turn into blue because that's what we're going to see is really a complete ocean here. And does that in itself have any kind of impact in terms of global warming? It, it does, because this bright white surface, surface reflects energy coming in from the sun. That's what cools both ends of the Earth, wow. the planet. So as the atmosphere warms from all the greenhouse gases, the ice begins to melt and exposes dark blue ocean water. And so the ocean warms, which then melts more ice, right? And then you have more blue water, which absorbs more energy, which melts more ice. So this is what it's we call really a positive a circuit, feedback. Yeah. It's a positive feedback. It's a circuit. So change makes more change, which makes more change. Um, but it's also going to change where wildlife goes. Um, it's going to change polar bears depend on ice to hunt from. They, yeah. they don't hunt from the water. They hunt from the ice. Mm -hmm. As the ice goes away, the distribution of the polar bears is going to change. Yeah. The yeah. migratory so routes of the whales, everything's going to change as the yeah. sea ice goes away. What could we do in our everyday life to change the development of the environment here? I mean, it's easy for you are a scientist and you do right. a lot here. You are right. ambassador. You're doing right. a lot political right. stuff. But I'm just a, right. a silly comedian. What can I do? Right. Oh well, <laughs> well I mean, I, thinking about the Arctic and thinking about this disappearing snow and ice and what we're doing to the atmosphere. Think about your relationship to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That means um, what kind of fuels do you use? How much energy do you consume? What foods do you eat and where does your food come from? What are the transportation carbon costs for, for your life, right? And, and, and beginning to be more conscious about consumerism um, and thinking about a wise life, a satisfying life. But I think we have a responsibility to realize that life, business as usual, is a disaster for the Arctic and that will ripple through to the rest of the places that we live. So I think it's personal responsibility and, and becoming aware of your, the footprint of your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Professor Virginia, as you look to the future, are you optimistic? And what I mean is this. The Arctic Council is made up of eight countries. The entire world has an interest in the Arctic. But can we align our interests in a positive, productive way in the future when it comes to the future of the Arctic? I think we can. I think we have to. The Arctic is the place, if we're going to get it right any place in this world right now, it's here because we can see it. The challenge is immediate. We have a community of scientists and citizens in, in, in the Nordic and the Arctic countries that have lived together for a long time. We have indigenous peoples to learn from and, and who will be motivation and partners in, in affecting change with us. So I, I really think the Arctic is the place for the rest of the globe. We have to be leaders. If we're going to solve these problems other places, this is where it's going to happen first. Great final words. Yeah. Thank you so thank much, you so much. Yeah. Professor Ross. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor yeah. Virginia. Thank you, yes, thank you. Professor, yes. Professor yes. Virginia. Yes. 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 Next year it's America's turn. So do you know the plans that President Obama and the United States have? Well, the chairmanship of the Arctic Council mm -hmm. is a remarkable opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the United States takes over the chairmanship of the Arctic Council in April of 2015. Mm -hmm. And we have three fundamental goals as we begin our, our, our chairmanship. Mm -hmm. First, ameliorating the impact of climate change mm -hmm. on the Arctic. Mm -hmm. Second, advancing stewardship mm -hmm. of the Arctic Ocean, which is changing so much with mm -hmm. the melting of the ocean ice. Mm -hmm and the witnessing of algae blooms mm -hmm. and other major changes. And third, advancing the welfare and the economies of the societies that traditionally have been in the Arctic. Because Felix, as you know, many people don't realize that there are literally millions of people who mm -hmm. make their lives in mm -hmm. the Arctic. Mm -hmm traditional societies yeah. as well they, as modern societies. Exactly, and they have a unique culture which really has to be kept. Uh, I mean, that, that's the culture of the world that, that's that's right. fading away. We have to keep it going. It has, it has mm -hmm. a value unto mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. that absolutely requires our effort towards conservation mm -hmm. and preservation. Mm -hmm. The question is, what can we do about it? Mm -hmm. And we can't do it, just things about it alone. No. We need to work with everyone. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is going to require a global approach. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the opportunity of the moment, mm -hmm. also the challenge. 
And thank you for watching this uh, film uh, and really hope that you pass on the information and, and if you think it's interesting and, and, and that you care anything about this, please pass the information further on and make other people watch the film. And thank you for joining Felix and me in this mm -hmm. learning experience. And if you want to learn more about the Arctic, please go to the Arctic Council website. Let's work together to come up with the best, most constructive approach about the future of the Arctic. <laughs>